This is Joe Pugh for the Boxing Voice, once again joined by Head of Sky Sports Boxing, Mr Adam Smith. How are you, Adam? I'm good, Joe. I'm very good. Really pleased to be in Camden. Um, I grew up in North London, so it's nice to uh, return to these parts. What a great gym here at the Camden Boxing Club. Richard Riakpour just in the ring at the moment, and uh, a wonderful uh, return to Wembley Arena for July, uh, sorry, June the 11th, getting ahead of myself. June, what a fantastic month for us at, uh, at Sky Sports, working with Boxer and with Top Rank on four fantastic weekends. So uh, really excited. And we've had a great couple of tournaments, which have been a lot of fun in Coventry and Manchester. Now it's time to get fight nights rolling again with some uh, terrific action at every level. And uh, yeah, June the 11th, why we're here today, a stacked card topped by a really important fight and a very good fight between Richard Riappor and uh, Fabio Turchi. Definitely, and I think in March when uh, Richard was out, when Juma stepped in for Turchi, I think we kind of thought that fight may have got lost, but how important for you was it to get that fight back on so it can kind of bridge that gap from the high-level domestic scene from European to fringe contender? It's a really good point, and you analyse that very well. I think when I first heard about the fight, I liked it. I said to Johnny Wish, I said, I really like this fight. It's exactly what Richard needs. Obviously, it, it fell away, and they came up with a couple of uh, opponents, and I turned them down. I said, look, I, 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 I want be a better main event for Sky, and I also want Richard to test himself here now because, you know, he, he lost a bit of time in, during the pandemic. He sort of dealt with the British scene, then had the pandemic, new trainer with Angel, and time to bet in. But he's got a role with it now, and I think we found the perfect... Um, solution with with you know Dion Juma already in training and hats off to both of them for taking it because I, I pushed back on that and I wanted that fight to happen you know both undefeated a really good fight Dion probably you know not quite big enough and ultimately at the end maybe just not quite good enough but he, he was really he gave a really good account of himself in the fight and he can definitely come on again uh, and for Richard it was it was a great test without the Turchi fight so now Let's see him against Turchi. Um, I said to him after that fight, yeah, a lot of people are talking about world titles next. I said, just, just make sure that when you go into that ring for your world title challenge, because I'm sure it will happen, you're ready. You need an acid test. You need a couple of really tough fights that ask you a few questions. I remember Ricky Hatton you know, beating everybody, and then he had that fight against Ray Oliveira before Costa Sioux. Ray Oliveira was a hard, hard fight, and it was perfect perfect education for Ricky before the Sioux fight and I think Richard needs this fight against Tabio, Fabio Turchi look will will he win he should win but it wouldn't surprise me it's a big banana skin this if Turchi beats him and teaches him a bit of a lesson but if Richard can get through this fight let's see how he gets through it evaluate that and then is he ready for a world title or maybe one more I think I'm possibly thinking sort of six to nine months beyond Turchi for a world title uh, tilt rather than this year but we'll see let's concentrate on june the 11th it's a hard fight and it's one that the midnight train's got to roll on he's got to get through and he's got to get through in style taking a look back last week adam obviously massive domestic fight yeah. in joshua watsi yeah. versus very craig good. richards over on the zone what did you make of that very good fight and two fighters i work with a lot on sky and there's a bit of you thinking oh i wish we'd had that fight i watched it i loved it um very, very good, and um, yeah, just a, an excellent matchup between two guys who are obviously Craig Richards already had that that shot against Dimitri Bivol and did much better than people thought he would. Look what Bivol's done since then, and Joshua, I'm sure, will get his chance in the next sort of nine to twelve months to fight for a world title. You know, Dimitri Bivol was brilliant the other night. Uh, we've got the Smith Batebiev fight. In a few weeks' time, June the uh, 18th weekend, to add to our Haney Cambosis uh, top ranked show, and then we've got the Coventry show. That's our June stack for us. But yeah, I loved it. I think there's been some really good fights uh, on the zone. Eddie's done really well. Um, I'm concentrating on what we're doing, which is a lot of business outside the ring, tying the Olympians up, getting the elite and the, uh, the young guns coming forward, both men and women. Very important that we did that business. Um, we've got real quality coming through alongside some other non-Olympians, the likes of Adam Azim, who's going to headline on June the 25th. Uh, 
alongside Karis Ardenstall turning professional, Dylan Jima and Corey Gibbs getting those opportunities, winning the tournament shows. Um, you know, I think what we're, we're building is a select stable, but of, of different characters, different personalities, um, men and women with, uh, you know, different ambitions. Some want to become British champions, some want to become superstars. Uh, I, th I think we know who wants to become a superstar in Ben Whittaker, don't we? You know, I'm sure he'll, uh, he'll, he'll be having fun trying to back up everything he's saying and uh, we'll be looking for the box office stars in the future. But it's a great position that we've got ourselves into after, you know, 10 months or so working together with Boxer. And uh, there's great competition out there. Fantastic fights week in, week out on all the other channels. To Zone, BT, Channel 5. Great. Great for a fan. I'm watching them all and I'm sure you are really enjoying it but my business is to look after sky customers first and foremost and uh, if you look at what we did in february look at the tournament shows look what we're doing in june we've got to give value for money great trade action great sort of casual stories um grassroots global i mean look at the four weeks australia london new york coventry Eddie and Frank Jett around the world, they do all that week in, week out. It's great for Sky to have that on our platform and uh, really excited about each and every one of those. And uh, shame that they sort of clash with wedding anniversaries, 16th birthdays for my daughter, things like that. Um, so I might not be very popular inside the house, but um, hopefully we give the customers and the fight fans uh, a really good tune because that's what this business is all about. We try. Definitely, I think we both know that boxing never stops, Adam. But uh, <laughs> my wife will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I heard an interview with uh, George Groves, and I was just interested to see what you think about this kind of the old guard of the past ten years have all kind of retired now, with the last of being Kelbrook and Amir Khan, and you had that kind of group of stars with uh, Bellew, Hay, all in the kind of early to mid 2010s, kind of going over to here. You've got the class of Tokyo. Tokyo, the, the young crop coming over, but from a, a British point of view, who do you think are the crop that are kind of, kind of bridge that gap within the next two to three immediate years? You're very good. That's another really good question. And I think, I think you're right. Um, there was a sort of um, a hiatus, wasn't there? And a lot of great names who got box office shots or were box office sort of regular fighters. Um, but we looked at the fights as well, you know, Hay v. Bellew and Frotch v. Kessler and Frotch v. Groves. It wasn't, it needed two of them to dance for a, a big box office event. You know, Dillian White, of course, as well, another one who, who, you know, fought everyone put in front of him. So we've had some great, great nights at that level and big Sky Sports fights with the likes of Anthony Million Dollar Crawler and George Groves, who both were at the Boxing Riders the other night. And do you know what? You've reeled off a, a great list of fighters that I can't believe they've all they're all still retired no they've all gone but they haven't come back which i think is brilliant and maybe that's a sign of times that you sort of have your time in the sun you you, you do that but then you know when it's right to, to sort of walk away i thought anthony look, looked a million dollars the other night it looks like it's like going to be a hollywood star with a long hair and he was suited up to the eyeballs he looks brilliant george grows fantastic catching up with him he's in a great place he's got a young family and they're living near me in West London. I really like George and, and, and Tony and I, even though he's working for his own, we keep in touch. I saw Darren Barker the other day. Do you know what? It's a great, it's a great, it's, it's a pleasure. I, I was privileged to work with such great fighters. But they've got to be, you know, where are the next cabs on the rank? You're absolutely right. Who's going to be that next star? Well, I think, first and foremost, we've had Carnbrook. I hope we'll get AJ and Usyk. Not guaranteed yet, but hopefully in the coming days we'll, we'll, we'll have that beyond that we've got to look at what we're going to do with box office I think it's Sky Sports customers um, appreciation that a lot of these big fights are going on Sky Sports Eubank Liam Williams could have been a pay-per-view fight Catrell and Taylor could have been we chose not to, we chose to put it on Sky Sports I think we want to give really good value for money, I think that's important and when the box office attractions come, we make sure that they're the right fights to go with um, Savannah Marshall and Clarissa Shields Desperate to do it on Sky Sports. Very big financial fight. Wouldn't that be great on Sky Sports so everyone can see it? The box office fights, the heavyweights. Where are we going with Dillian White? Deontay Wilder's coming back. Come on, Deontay, come back. 
Come back, come fight in the UK. I'd love to see Deontay Wilder fight a Dillian White or an AJ one day, etc. So that's another great news that he's coming back as Tyson seems to have temporarily at least retired and looking after his uh, his brood and doing the bins in Morecambe. I think he's in more glamorous places at the moment. He went to the south of France and stuff. But Tyson, I'm sure, will come back at some point. But look, it's great to hear Deontay's back. Yeah, there's an open there's an open platform, so we can we can slowly work out what we think. And I don't know. There's there's some big names all around on on with other competitors with other channels and with our own so let's wait and see i'm not in a rush to put on loads of box office events only when the time is right and it's and it's the best value because it's got to be starry a box office show we know that so i think at the moment we'll concentrate on building getting our stable going getting them out concentrating on those big shows in june big shows in july are going to come as well and then September will be monster. I'd be a monster September. We've covered, the, obviously, the great future of boxing. I've got to touch on just uh, one or two negatives. Uh, over... Ask me whatever you want. <laughs> Cheers, Adam. Uh, last week, we saw a kind of controversial video of Tyson Fury kind of drunkenly having a good time, but obviously there, there is connotations to that sort of behaviour. And then this week, we've seen Anthony Joshua's kind of goading video. I'm not sure if you've seen it, but... Whether you've seen it or not, those kind of videos, is that a bad look for heavyweight boxing, certainly British boxing? You are right to ask the question. I will be honest with you, I haven't seen the AJ footage yet. Um, I've been asked already about that, so I can't really comment on it. I've been told what it's about, but I haven't seen it. Um, the most important thing for me with Anthony is that his mind has got to be 100% focused on Alexander Rusik. That's a hugely difficult challenge as we saw first time around. So, I, I know AJ, he's a great guy. I know Tyson Fury, he's a great guy. And I know Deontay Wilder, he's a great, fight, great guy as well. They're all fighters, they're all humans, and I would say they all probably have bad days, and they all get itchy with things. I mean, they wouldn't get into the ring if they didn't have, you know, that ability to switch it up a bit and, come on, it's... Um, I'm sure you've had a bad day, I've had a bad day where we've done things that we don't probably, are not particularly proud of, and you know, you want to learn from that and get better. I haven't seen the footage, so I can't comment, but all I know is that Anthony Joshua is a phenomenal guy, a wonderful ambassador for boxing. He will be fighting Alexander Usyk soon, who's gone through terrific turmoil in his homeland of Ukraine. Yeah, you can't even imagine, and it's just incredible that he's coming back to fight. I'm hoping that we get that contract and that deal over the line and I can go back to working with them. But that's what AJ should and needs to be focused on specifically. And I'm sure under Angel Fernandez in Loughborough, he's doing just that. And finally, Adam, I spoke to Eddie last week. Hope yes, fighters have responsibilities, of course. You're in the spotlight, you have responsibilities. And, you know, Tyson's had days where, you know, he's been... But he's been honest. And he's come out and said, you know, I've, I've had... I've had the lows, the real lows. You know, it's the, it, it, it's his, you know, his big push for for mental health and the importance of that. But I think sometimes you've got to say, and like fighters, like in that, and any sportsman or women, they can have. You know, you look at what's happened with the pitch invasions recently. I don't want to get into all that, but yeah, it's difficult, isn't it? It's like the fans want to be near the, the their sports stars, and sometimes they can go overboard, and it makes it very difficult every time to keep you cool or to do the right thing but they've got a lot of pressure and they've got a responsibility to do that as much as possible of course definitely and finally i spoke to eddie a lot last week about the announcement How of you right? Hey. How is he, right yeah he's, he, he's good he's good uh, I watch him a lot on television and on my screen he's he's on my screen a lot i haven't seen him in person for a long time so maybe i will be soon with you're missing him adam you used to speak to him every day didn't you i did speak to him more than once a day um <laughs> Of course, of course. You know, you can't spend 10 years of your life with someone day in, day out and, and have the relationship that we have and not miss them, of course. Would he admit he's missing me? Maybe not on camera, but and maybe I wouldn't. But look, it's, that's a private thing, isn't it? I, I, I'm, look, we're going to work together again, hopefully, with AJ. So I'm looking forward to it. It's a business. I still work on the darts, which is under Matchroom and Sky as well with Matt Porter. Frank Smith and Eddie and I and the team have always had incredibly strong relationships. 
I saw Darren the other night. I saw, you know, a lot of the Tony Belly and I message each other still. It's business. And that's it. I work with Ben Shalom and I work with Todd de Berth now. Ben Shalom is brilliant. He's going to be fantastic. I'm loving it. And we're, and we're building a business, you know, a boxer business, a sky business, top rank. Everyone's having a good time. Eddie's doing well over on the zone and matchroom. As I said, time and time again, I wish them well. Galalia fights a fantastic addition. And we've got some great additions as well. And uh, competition is brilliant. He said that the great yeah, yeah, he said that AJ Usyk 2 will be announced in the coming days, but the UK broadcaster won't be. Obviously, you're hoping that you can get over the line for Sky Sports, fantastic platform, as we know. But when do you expect the announcement to be made? More importantly, about the UK broadcaster, because we know it's kind of July 23rd. I hope so. You probably know more than I do if you spoke to Eddie as recently as you have. I've been speaking a lot to Freddie Cunningham. Our deal's not done. Um, the fight's not been announced, but we've heard everyone saying it's going to be on the 23rd of July. Um, every hour, every day that passes, I said to Freddie, is, have we got enough time? Um, there's a lot, to, obviously, that goes into a fight promotion. Um, where are we today? May the 26th? Um, I guess if the fight's going to happen on July the 23rd, it'll be announced next week, latest. So that's my guess. Um, I don't know. Um, I don't know how the latest sort of legalities, contracts, back and forth going. I get you know, information passed down to me. I'm sure it will be. I'm hopeful that everything will be tied up. And uh, I'm hoping that, you know, we'll be working with Matchroom on that project again. And that we'll be working with AJ and 258 and, you know, the old gang back together. And look, it's all about business. It's about what's right for AJ, for Usyk, for Sky Sports Box Office, for... Matchroom and for uh, 258. So, you know, we're all big boys. We can all work together. Of course we can. Um, if that happens, you never say never in boxing. Something could change in the next 24, 48 hours. But I've said it before a million times. I'll say it again. I have full confidence that AJ will remain on Sky Sports uh, for the rest of his career. And I hope I'm proved right. And if I'm not, I'll be very upset. Adam, always a pleasure. Hopefully speak to you again soon. And best of luck in Paris on Saturday. Thank you very much. I'm going to really enjoy it. We're heading off tomorrow night. My son and I, we're doing the Euro Tunnel. We're going to get to the north sort of suburbs of Paris about five in the morning on Saturday. We're going to get a few hours kip. We're going to go and join the Smith brothers and everybody else that's going to pile into the, uh, into the, into the Paris uh, center of Paris. We're going to enjoy the game. And straight after the game, Oscar and I got to come back because we've got to be back on Sunday for our or for his sister's birthday party so there's no waiting around in paris it's a lot of driving it's a dad and son you know road trip but uh i'm delighted to have uh, managed to get tickets and uh yeah it will be an amazing occasion and uh, fingers crossed we bring three trophies home no rest of the wicked cheers adam no rest. cheers cheers thank you very much